contrary to popular belief, steroid use is universal in sports. Even chess players, don't <laughs> ask me why, even chess players take steroid. Why, I don't know. That I couldn't answer. But it's universal. Almost Bowlers, bowlers take steroids. Why? I don't know. But they take steroids. It's universal. Okay. So my, to answer the question, if you want to compete on an elite level, even with you have the, the genetics, if you're a naturally good athlete, if you're a naturally a muscular bodybuilder, you still need to take the drugs to compete on an evil level. There's no way around it. Okay. So if you do that then, um, and I, I, you know, it seems as though a lot of this is kind of, maybe it's not, but in my mind, it's still kind of an under the table thing. Is, is there good ones and bad ones out of everything that it's like, okay, if, some, if you meet someone in a locker room and they're saying you should do this and mm -hmm. it seems to be worth the, the risk, you know, what, what would be, a, you know, a couple of good places and what would be definitely don't touch that? Right. There's certain drugs uh, are, that are far more dangerous than others. Right. Uh, for example, just right off the top, oral anabolic steroids, all of them, even the ones that are considered safe, like Anavar and Winstrol, two trade names, uh, they, if you, it depends on uh, any drug. It depends on time and dosage. Any pharmacologist will tell you. It depends on how long you take them and how much you take them. The, the higher the dose, the more dangerous it's going to be, mainly to liver function. We're talking about oral steroids. And also cardiovascular function. Again, the larger the amount, the greater the risk. Uh, now, a, lot of the, a great myth among athletes and bodybuilders is that injectables are safe because they bypass the liver. Not so. What they have to realize is everything winds up in the liver. Yes, initially, if you take a testosterone or an anabolic steroid, a nandrolone injection, it will bypass the liver, and, but it eventually has to be degraded in the liver. And if you take enough, I mean, they're talking about taking several thousand milligrams a week, that's all going to wind up in the liver. And that's far beyond the capacity of the liver to handle. It's going to cause liver damage eventually. But to answer your question directly, certain steroids are far more immediately dangerous than others, even whether they're oral or injectable. An example of the oral version that's dangerous, and I don't want to, I shouldn't mention this, but he said it publicly, so I guess I can. Dorian used a drug called Anadrol 50. He's mentioned this publicly, so I'm not betraying anything. Uh, I've seen him say it several times. He talked about how it gained tremendous size and strength. It does. It's a very powerful drug. Anadrol 50, it's called. Uh, oxomethylone, I believe, is, is, the, uh, is the generic name. But it's also extremely hard on the liver. Uh, if you take it more than, let's say, um, uh, six weeks, you're going to start to break down the, your hepatocytes, your liver cells. And that can lead to scarring, cirrhosis, liver damage, liver cancer, uh, peliosis hepatis, which is blood cysts in the liver. Horrible, horrible thing to have. Uh, so that's you know, an example. What's that one? Anadrol. That's Anadrol 50, yeah. Right. Uh, there's another one, uh, uh, it's the fluoride-based one, I can't remember the Halitestin. Halitestin. Hal is a, a so-called cutting drug. A bodybuilder who <laughs> I'm sorry I'm laughing, but you know, this notion that certain drugs will cut you up more than others is laughable to me. I mean, that's not the way it works, but it's, it's gen a general belief, let's say it that way. Halitestin is a fa uh, very popular cutting drug used shortly before a bodybuilding contest. Unfortunately, it's also hard on the liver. The good news, halitestin is usually only used for short periods, maybe the last three or four uh, weeks. Again, uh, under the notion that it increases muscularity. Side note about halitestin, which is very interesting. It was used by President John F. Kennedy. Yes, John F. Kennedy was on steroids. <laughs> John F. Kennedy had a condition called Addison's disease where his adrenal glands did not produce cortisone. So he had to take large amounts of cortisone to stay alive. Otherwise, he'd die. Cortisone causes muscle catabolism. You know, it breaks down the muscle. His doctor, Janet something, I can't remember her name, to counter, she even knew this back then in the early 60s, to counter the, this is one of the things steroids do, one of the reasons why they make you big. They block the effects of cortisol at breaking down muscle. They actually block them. And so, is cortisol, is, it, does, is, that, is there a reason why cortisol should break down muscle then? Well, cortisol is a stress hormone if you're, uh, in other words, if you're in an emergency situation, your body will break down uh, 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 the, the amino acids in muscle to send them to the liver 
where the amino acids are immediately turned into glucose as energy. It's, okay. It serves as a light an emergency. Emergency, right. exactly. Okay. Okay. But in other cases, if you're not in an emergency situation and you have a high cortisol level, unfortunately, yeah, it, yeah, exactly. <laughs> if you're under a lot of constant stress, your cortisol, you're in danger of losing muscle right. and also of breaking down the neurons in the brain. The cortisol is terrible for your brain neurons. Oh. It, it, it causes, they think it's the main cause of what they call senior moments. People who are a little older where they forgot where they put their keys. They think that's some years and years of cortisol breaking down Stress. neurons in the wow. hippocampus. Anyway, that's another story. But the point being that, that uh, so Kennedy, uh, the doctor, Janet Travell, her name was, she gave him, uh, she gave him testosterone propionate, halitestin, and one more steroid. He was on three anabolic steroids. President John F. Kennedy was a steroid user. I always get a kick out of that. It's an interesting thing, but... The point is that halitestin is a bad one. Yeah, halitestin. But now, getting to the injectables, by far, and this is really ironic because this particular steroid happens to be. If you said to me, what is the most popular underground steroid in the world right now? What is the one that's most sought after? Immediate answer: Trenbolone. It's called Trenbolone. Trenbolone uh, uh, it was a drug very briefly released as a human drug and then taken off the market. Uh, Trenbolone was then kind of repackaged to use as a veterinary drug. It was made into pellets, injected into cattle. But Trenbolone is an extremely powerful steroid. It is. It puts a lot of muscle on. It doesn't turn into estrogen. It doesn't, it's almost a holy grail for bodybuilders. Builds muscle, loses fat. Uh, you know, this and that, and it's very sought after. As I said, it hasn't been made by any legitimate pharmaceutical company <laughs> in about 50 years. It's only available on these black market endosets, internet sites. Uh, for a while, uh, they, uh, body bullets, uh, they, they, they were uh, online, they were giving the recipe of how to turn the pellet, animal pellets, how to convert them into a form that you can inject in yourself. So these guys were doing Shit. that. They were buying animal pellets from veterinary sources uh, of Trembolone and injecting it into themselves. Then, with the advent, as the black market got, got, rose in popularity and profits, they started selling Start Trembolone, producing. so they didn't have to do that anymore with the pellets. Now, here's the problem with Trembolone. Recent studies, and I've said this, I'm, I think I'm the only person saying this, I don't know why, Trembolone is the only steroid they found thus far, and this is animal experiments, it causes a buildup of abnormal proteins in the brain called tau and beta amyloid, which are the underlying causes of Alzheimer's disease. It also increases alpha-synuclein, which is another protein which causes Parkinson's disease. What does that mean in practical terms? It's so far shown in about five animal studies. One, different species all had the same effect. They were given trenbolone, and you want to put this in italics, in doses equal to about what these bodybuilders are using. What's going to happen to these guys? I don't know, but I, I'm warning them, if you keep using Trenbolone... And that's the after, popular one that people are using at the moment. The most popular. The most. I've been cursed online. When I said this in another video where I talked about Trenbolone about a year ago, people were calling me all kinds of names saying I'm full of crap, don't listen to this guy. What titles has he win? Blah, blah, blah. You know, they got absolutely angry at me because I was, you know, telling them the truth. They couldn't handle it. Like that movie says, you can't handle the truth. They couldn't handle the truth. So, you know, my point is, I don't know what's going to happen to these guys in the future, but it doesn't bode well. No. You know, I mean, you know, these animals have short lifespans, so the, the, the brain defects showed up sooner. And in a human, it might take longer. But if you're taking Trembolone year after year, if you start in your 20s, you're still taking it into the 40s, maybe by 50, you'll be completely gone brain-wise. You know, you won't even know who your wife is. I mean, is it worth that risk? I say no. <laughs> so that is the most, uh, that to answer your question, by far the most dangerous uh, injectable steroid. By far. Most of the injectables are tend to be on the safer side as long as you don't go crazy. What are, what are the sort of like, if you had to choose one or two, what would be the ones that you would probably want to start with? Well, not that's probably the wrong thing, but what were the ones that would be the safer of the bunch if you were to do it? Okay, there's a couple of, uh, of course, testosterone itself in, uh, in uh, judicious amounts is good. Uh, if you start to go crazy with testosterone, there was a bodybuilder named Dallas McCarver. 
He was a top pro, destined to win the Mr. Olympia, tremendous physique, huge, gigantic guy, about 270 pounds. He was taking, the, they, he was taking off season 15,000 milligrams of testosterone a week. The, the human male produces one to 11 milligrams in the body. And he was taking 15,000, he dropped dead. Now, again, I'm not gonna say to you it was cause and effect that that level of testosterone killed him. Turns out he had a genetic uh, uh, tendency to cardiovascular in his family. He should never have been taking steroids in the first place, but, but that's another story. But the point being that testosterone in normal amounts, like for example, as I mentioned, testosterone replacement therapy and the doses they give the men, they've looked at it now for 25, 30 years now, completely safe. It does not cause prostate cancer. There's no apparent, there's a little bit of controversy about it with cardiovascular disease. There's some, some, there's some studies indicating it might cause a little damage to the endothelium, the lining of the blood vessels, but you know, they're really not sure of that. That's a possibility. Thus far, no, no man who's been on testosterone replacement therapy has died directly as a result of that. Let's put it that way. So judicious amounts of testosterone are safe. Another one called decadrablin, nandrolone is a usually a safe steroid. Again, uh, I've seen massive doses uh, suggested online. That will mess you up really bad. You never want to take nandrolone if you're competing as an athlete or a bodybuilder in a drug-tested contest because nandrolone leaves what they call markers that can be detected by drug tests two years after you stop using it. You can be busted for nandrolone Two years, in fact, there's been cases, nandrolone is found naturally in muscle, it's like muscle meat. There's been cases where athletes, not bodybuilders, athletes, uh, track stars, this and that, have, have not passed drug tests because they showed up positive for nandrolone and it was traced back to the fact they were eating a lot of food that naturally contained nandrolone. Yeah. So, you know, so, but again, uh, in, norm, in normal, other than that, it's a fairly safe, except it, it, it does, uh, in some guys it causes an uh, 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 effect where uh, they get like impotent. Right. <laughs> it's not uh, good thing to It's have. called decadic. Decadic. <laughs> that's, that's the expression. <laughs> so about a small percentage of guys when they take, uh, it's similar to another condition caused by trenbolone where they get a lot of coughing. They call it trend cough. Wow. And nobody knows the cause of that. They think that the trend somehow irritates, irritates the, uh, you know, the, uh, li you know, the, the lining of the uh, throat and right. it causes you to cough. Nobody really knows the cause of it. There's a couple of other that I see online. Is, is SARMs. What's SARMs, yeah. Select, oh, okay. Sel selective Androgen Receptor Modulator, SARMs, that's what it stands for. SARMs originally came out in the late 40s. Now what SARMs are, uh, when they say Selective Androgen Receptor Modulator, all testosterone, all anabolic steroids interact with the androgen receptor. There's only one androgen receptor, but estrogen has two to three receptors. That's the difference. So all drugs, the anabolic steroids or testosterone itself, they interact with the androgen receptor. Now, the fact is that uh, testosterone and anabolic steroids, of course, have side effects. Cardiovascular, some people still talk about prostate problems and this and that. So scientists wanted a way to get the benefits. You see, uh, testosterone provides anabolic effects and androgenic effects. The anabolic effects are the building of the muscle, the building of bones. Androgenic effects are hair growth, sex drive, growth of sex organs, acne, this type of thing, male pattern baldness, all this and that. They wanted to develop a drug that will give you the, that focused on the anabolic effects of testosterone, but somehow downplayed not the, the androgenic effects to nothing but the way to do this, it had to interact with the androgen receptor. So they developed these drugs in the 40s that, sure enough, the original, they, sure, they interacted directly with the androgen receptor, didn't seem to cause any of the liver problems, the, the adverse effect on blood lipids. But for some reason, it, it went into limbo. Nothing happened with it. I don't know why. I couldn't tell you why. Just nothing happened with it. They just shoved it aside. I guess maybe the drug companies didn't want to market it. It's the only thing I could guess at. In the late 90s, another, a, a top uh, steroid chemist, he came out with new SARMs that were more effective than the original one. These were really were good. Total interaction with the androgen receptors, no effect on blood lipids, no effect on the heart, zero effect on the prostate gland, almost no androgenic effects. And, and this was touted as the ultimate replacement 
for testosterone because a lot of physicians were hesitant to give men testosterone replacement because they still believe the myth that testosterone caused prostate cancer, which was based on one case published in 1941. One man right. was based on. That's it. There was no evidence. The truth of the matter is... But when you have prostate, they do lower purposely your testosterone. They do. They do. Because the prostate gland only... Uh, only accepts a finite amount of testosterone, the normal amount circulating in the blood. That's all the prostate gland ex uh, accepts. However, if you are consistently low in testosterone, then there, there's a change that occurs in the pro prostate where you could theoretically stimulate prostate cancer with testosterone, only if you start out low. That's the way it works. See? Mm, so okay. anyway, uh, so you know, they, the problem is that doctors... They believe this thing about the prostate cancer and the cardiovascular. So they, you know, even if you came to them, Doc, I'm low on testosterone. I get all these symptoms. I'm depressed. I'm getting fat. I'm, my muscles are. I'm sorry, sir. It causes prostate cancer. This has been told to me. That I, me, doctors have said this to me. <clears throat> so they, th this seemed like an ideal answer. They could give out. They could boost these men's testosterone without the danger of prostate problems, cardiovascular, and everything. So what happened was, they're still not out. They're still experimental drugs. But here again, the internet, the guys on the internet heard about this and they, ah, it works like this steroids, it. but it doesn't cause the side effects. We could get big using this stuff and don't have to worry about this stuff. So they started selling it in the black market. It's available all over the world. You can get anywhere. So they're selling SARMs on the black market. But, there's a, but the problem is, in their ads, which I've looked at, because I've written a couple of articles on SARMs, they're very devious and they lie. For example, they say that, you know, when you take testosterone antibody steroids, as I said earlier, it cuts off your, your uh, endogenous testosterone, stops. There's a signal sent, stops, your body stops making testosterone. They say in their ads that unlike testosterone and antibody steroids, SARMs do not cut off your natural testosterone. Lie. Really? They do. Okay. That's one of the problems. That's probably one of the reasons why the drug companies haven't released SARM, because they do cut off your natural testosterone. That's a problem, mm. especially with the guys like you were asking about earlier who still make their own testosterone. But that didn't stop them. They started selling the SARMs. They're available all over. It was a safe steroid. A safe, a safe, right. They're selling it as a safe steroid, and they're saying, and they're comparing some of them. Uh, RAD, I think it's RAD11. I can't remember the exact name, but... There have been some studies showing, sure enough, that this produces anabolic effects equivalent to oral anabolic steroids. Some of them really are strong. But the problem, now you say, well, well that, that sounds pretty good. What, what could be the problem? Hmm. Besides the fact that it turns off your own testosterone, the major problem is the, 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 uh, uh, a couple of uh, researchers bought 50 SARMs from various black market sources on the internet and they analyzed them, right? 50% of them had no SARMs at all. <laughs> Another 20% of them had stuff in it that wasn't SARMs, stuff like DHEA, androstenedone, which they resurrected, but they weren't SARMs. So basically, I'm not saying all the SARMs are, that are sold on the internet are fake, but the problem is right now it's a crapshoot. Yeah. I mean, these are not legitimate companies selling it, so you don't know what you're getting. And that holds true for any black market drug. They're not, there's no quality control.